Okay, so today we're going to take everything that we did yesterday with two-dimensional shapes and we're going to move to three-dimensional shapes and look at the volume and surface area of various shapes over the next few days. Today specifically we're going to look at rectangular prisms and cylinders. So as you know from previous years of course, you know that volume is the amount of space inside an object. Okay, and surface area, you kind of take the area of all of the faces and you add them up. That's what that definition means. So today we're going to look at the rectangular prism. Of course, the most common example in every day is your boxes of all kinds, whether it be a Kleenex box, a packing box, all those kinds of things. And we're also going to look at cylinders. Um, again, common examples, I like to always think of the soup can as my most common example. You try and think of some other examples of cylinders. So let's look at our first example here. With, we're going to deal with some popcorn. So popcorn is sold in two different size containers. We can have a cylinder and a rectangular box. Each one sells for the same amount, so cost is not a factor here. Which one is the better buy? So I first want you to be thinking about, is this a volume question or is this a surface area question? Okay, your answer should be that it's a volume question because we want to know which one holds more popcorn. Obviously, if they're the same price, we of course want the one that sells the most popcorn. So we actually just simply need to find the volume of each of these shapes. Okay. Okay, so I'm actually going to start with the box, the rectangular prism at the bottom, just because it's a little bit more simple, and you've definitely seen this one before. For the volume of a rectangular prism, it's just the volume, of course, and equals the length times the width times the height. Okay, which is just the area of the base, which in this case is actually a square times the height. Okay, and we simply substitute all the numbers in. It doesn't really matter which ones are which. I tend to just write it's 10 times 10 times 12 being the height. Again, doesn't really matter when we multiply. Okay, but I do need to see that step where you plug in all the numbers and then we're going to punch that into our calculator and of course we're going to get 1200 and we do need units. Notice this one is centimeters cubed. Okay, so every time you're doing the volume of one of these shapes I'm looking for um, a line that has the formula. Okay, so a line that has the formula right here. We're looking for a plug-in line and then an answer with units. Okay, let's go up and now look at our cylinder. So you are going to receive a formula sheet in class that has the formulas on it for you. And you'll see that the formula for the cylinder is very similar. We've got the volume equals. It's actually the area of the base. Okay, this is where the formula comes from times the height, same as the box. So the area of the base, it's actually a circular base, right? So the formula is pi r squared and times our height. And again, then we just need to have our plug-in step where we plug in all our numbers. So we've got pi, our radius is of course 4, you can see from the picture, and our height is 25. And then you're going to punch all that into your calculator and find out that the answer is 1,256. We'll do one decimal place for all of these, and again, we need our unit, which is centimeters cubed. Okay, so now that we have our two volumes calculated, we can clearly see that the cylinder has a higher volume, which of course would mean that it holds more popcorn, and so we just need to write a therefore statement. Okay, so therefore, okay, the cylinder container... is the better buy because it holds more popcorn. Okay, let's take a look at example two. A water storage tank is shaped like a cylinder, so we have this cylinder over here, and we are going to find the area of the top and side of the tank. In other words, we're going to find the surface area for this cylinder. So we have the formula up here. The surface area for a cylinder is actually the area of the top and the bottom. Now you'll notice there's a top and a bottom, so that's why there's a two, and they're of course circles, so we have the area of the circle. 
and the area of the curved surface. So that's the part kind of around here, okay? And that part can be expressed as 2 pi rh. So we are going to find the area of the top and the side of the tank only. So note that there's no bottom. We're not going to find the surface area, including the bottom. So we will need to modify this formula just a little bit. So if we're going to take away one of the circles, then the formula is going to become surface area equals just 1 pi r squared plus, sorry, 2 pi r h. Okay, so now we can just proceed by substituting in the known values. So we'll keep our pi as is. And if you look up at the cylinder, you see that the diameter is 14. So that means that the radius is 7. So we have 7 squared plus we have 2 times pi times 7 again, times the height, which is 22. Okay, and now we just punch those values into our calculator. You can punch it in two separate pieces and then add them together. It's kind of up to you at this point how many steps you want to show. Uh, you can go straight to the answer and just punch it in all in one step, and you'll see when you try that, you get 1,121.5, and the units here are meters, and we are finding surface area, and so that's meters squared. Okay, now we're going to use the surface area to determine how many cans of paint are needed to paint this surface. Okay, and we're told that one can covers 180 meters squared. Okay, so this is a nice simple calculation. Hopefully that makes sense to you that if our surface area is 1,121.5 meters squared, we're going to take that and we're going to divide it by the 180 because every can covers 180 to find out how many cans. Okay, and when we punch that into our calculator, you'll notice you get 6.2. Okay, of course you can't go to the store and ask them to buy 6.2 cans of paint. So how many do you think you need in this case? The correct answer is actually 7 cans of paint. Okay, and that's important to note in cases like this. Obviously, if you only buy six cans of paint, then you're not quite going to be able to paint this whole water storage tank. So you do always have to round up in this scenario. You need to think about the reality of this scenario and what you would go to the store to buy. Okay, so th those are your examples for today. And tomorrow in class, we'll do lots of work in practicing some of these types of questions. Thanks.